March 632 BC. Priests gather to plot a murder. For decades, they've been under the thumb of a wealthy family, backed by the power of Egypt's pharaoh. Now the time is ripe for revenge. This is a true story written down on a piece of papyrus that has survived for two and a half thousand years. It's the story of a murder, the final act of a 30-year feud that tears apart a city and brings down a dynasty. years, Egypt has been ravaged by civil war and foreign invasion. Libyan invaders have swept in from the north. Nubian armies have conquered the south. With the kingdom in chaos, a wealthy priesthood turns itself into an independent political force. The priests of the god Amun become power brokers between rival warlords. For 450 years, they are answerable to no one. But in the seventh century BC, Samtek, a ruthless warrior, storms to power and reunites the kingdom. Egypt, has a new pharaoh. No part of the country will be left untouched by the new regime. Six hundred and sixty BC, a stranger arrives in Tujoy. Hetiese is the pharaoh's cousin. He's been dispatched to take control of the town. Tujoy is home to one of the great temples of Amun, and its priests have to be brought to heel. Tiese orders his men to search the temple. This is more than a place of worship. Temples own most of the land in Egypt and control most of its wealth. Tiese knows from its accounts just how rich this temple is. He is under orders to redirect its wealth to the pharaoh. If he delivers, he will also make his own fortune. A 
Etiese has two priests beaten. It's a brutal demonstration of the Pharaoh's power. The message is clear. After four centuries of independence, the power of the priesthood of Amun is at an end. In Tujoy, the priests will now take their orders from Petit S.A. Two and a half thousand years ago, Petit S.A.'s great-great-grandson wrote down his family's history. It unfolds in a papyrus 14 feet long that was discovered in the late 19th century. The story he tells is a tragic saga of political and personal revenge, the seeds of which were sown when Petit Esse first took control of the temple. It's 11 years since Petit Esse arrived in Tujoy, and the temple is flourishing. The wealth of the whole region flows in from the temple's vast estates in the form of grain. Tiese is now the self-styled prophet of Amun, the highest ranking priest in the temple of Tujoy. Samat. Amun is Egypt's state god. Every morning, Petit Esse ritually awakens his effigy. He is attended by his junior priests, including the young boy he'd had savagely beaten a decade ago. Just in case the priests should forget where the power really lies, Petit Esse has installed a statue of himself right next to the shrine of the god Amun. An inscription lists the titles he has granted himself. Hami. 
At the temple's expense, he has also granted himself a fifth of the temple's vast income, making him one of the richest men in Egypt. <laughs> Etiesse is now the father of three sons and a daughter, Nitemhe. Nitemhe is now old enough to marry. For Petiesse, her coming of age is a chance to lay the foundations of his dynasty in Tujoy. In his account, his great-great-grandson describes the day in 649 BC when Petiesse brings an outsider to the family home in Tujoy. Haruj. Sebifteo Abasti, Ranef, Ilubihatbi. Horuj is a minor official from a nearby town. Petiese first met him a year ago when he began looking for a husband for his daughter. Horuj has no money. In fact, he has debts which Petiese agrees to pay off. But his family were once priests here. He has the ideal pedigree to be Petiese's deputy in Tujoy. This isn't about love. It's about politics. The papyrus records the actual words of the deal. What's above your town eye? Nothing here they kill him. Under the terms of the marriage, Etiese will pass on all his titles and his wealth from the temple to Nitemhe and Horuj. The dynasty is secure. Petiese's thoughts now turn to his own future. He's been in the provinces for 11 years. It's been long enough. Petiese plans to move to Thebes closer to the center of political power. He'll leave his son-in-law in charge of the temple. Horuj is anxious. Petiese reassures him that he'll always be protected by the pharaoh.
شنام هادشي كله سجلتي كلشي حاجه زبله كلشي لا A year ago, Horridge was a minor public official. Now he finds himself in sole control of one of the great institutions of Egypt. He's inherited Petiesse's power and the riches of his lifestyle, but with them, a legacy of simmering resentment. Seventeen years under the pharaoh's protection, Horridge has enjoyed the fruits of the power he has gained from his marriage. But the passage of time has done nothing to temper the bitter memories of Petiesse's brutal regime. His daughter, Nitemhe, is now the mistress of the largest household in Tujoy. Over the years, she has become a shrewd businesswoman. Through her agents, she trades food and textiles up and down the Nile, produce of the family estate, adding further to the dynasty's considerable fortune. For the other priest's families, life is much harder. To top up their meager salaries, they have to work their own small plots of land outside the town. Temhe now has a family of her own. Two sons who one day will inherit their grandfather's fortune and his power over the priesthood. As Petiesse's grandsons, these boys have known nothing but a life of luxury. While the rest of the country makes do with bread and beer, they, like other aristocratic children, feast on rare delicacies like hyena and Nile turtle. As long as they enjoy the protection of the pharaoh, Petiesse's dynasty will continue to flourish.
300 miles south of Tujoy, in the temple of Karnak, a new deal has been struck. After a standoff that has lasted for three decades, the priests of Amun and the Pharaoh have made peace. Petiese has been a leading figure in brokering a new settlement between church and state. As a symbol, the Pharaoh's virgin daughter, Nitocris, has been installed in the temple as the wife of the god Amun. The priests of Amun are now the Pharaoh's allies. Petiese has helped to forge a new political order, but he has not considered its impact on his family back in Tujoy. Nitemre's sons have reached a turning point in their lives. The end of childhood, marked by cutting off a boy's sidelock. The papyrus records this significant moment. Is Shopi Isho? Ihals now on Harwood, Sebafteo Abasti, in Teru. Now that he has reached puberty, Orage's older son is to be circumcised. As the son of a priest, the ritual is essential to make him pure enough to serve the gods. A third generation of Petiese's dynasty has come of age. For the priests, this is a living reminder of their subjugation. News of the political settlement in Thebes reaches the temple in Tujoy. The priests meet in secret. For the first time since the pharaoh Samtek seized the throne 30 years ago, the balance of power has swung back in their favor. With the new deal struck in Thebes, they believe the pharaoh will no longer touch them.
اللي كان الاخوان هو الناس اللي تكفصوا علينا بزاف تاخذوا لنا مكتنا they devise a plot to overthrow Petiese's family. The papyrus preserves their actual words. At last, the time has come for revenge. It's harvest time, when every family celebrates the festival of the goddess Renenuted. She's the lady of the fertile fields, the goddess of plenty, who is supposed to bring prosperity and good luck for the year ahead. The corn mummy that hangs over the grain store is meant to protect the harvest and the family's children from harm. At this time of year, the old corn mummy is burnt to rid the world of evil. But elsewhere in Tujoy, the priests are finalizing their plan to overthrow the family. <laughs> اليوم غادي نجمعو اليوم نهزو الباطونات ونمشيو عندهم واخا ميني ميني تن هو او او رويي ستيرنا تن اي هو او نابوتي تم سوني تن هو او هينوي شاتوا دراري بيكون على خير Now that they have come of age, Horaj decides that his sons are old enough to collect the family's share of the harvest by themselves. He leaves to Joy to look after business on the far side of the river. The servant in tow, the young boys set off for the temple. The events that follow are recorded in detail in the family history written by Petiese's great great grandson. <laughs> Ihals now 
ونحروج ايه حنوتي اهلا غنعطيكم شي حاجة حسن من الزرع غادي نعطيكم العصا علاش شنو درنا حنا شو العصا اني حلو وعبوني يحيو ابو الحن نبوته كتو اندي حل سناو ونحورج بري بتو احراي ابيت وعب هاو بتو احراي ونسو يوبه انرو انتقح انامون حتى اوسي انسخي Terrified that the priests will attack the house, the family's servants barricade themselves in. كاين تنحي ابتيتي تمع او من بحال سنو جار بالسيء احرص ليمون حرج انت وجاي ان نفحي بي ايمونت Rai mo joy new yet so joy. Inaf maong she lapsh un yu crown new hone. Rai frase un kute un pie un nuton he. Instead of going home to Tujoy, the records tell us that Horuj sets out immediately for Thebes. He believes that only Petiese has the power to restore order in Tujoy. It will be at least six days before Horuj returns.
almost a week since his grandson's murder and 28 years after he first arrived in the town, Petiese returns to Tujoy. Terrified of the rebel priests, no one has dared enter the temple to bring out the bodies of the boys. <laughs> Unless they receive a proper burial, Nitemhe's sons will have no chance of an afterlife. Their battered bodies are discovered in a storeroom below the temple. Their killers must be found. A manhunt is underway. Having found the dead boys, the police arrest their killers. Taif unse ehrai, au niu monich. Shabi unuhio in pitimi. What kind of punishment will Petiese meet out to the men who have murdered his grandsons? The papyrus tells us. Three decades after he brutally took control of the temple, Petiese returns to the scene to confront the priests who have taken revenge against his family. Nimet, Nofa, Pievriere, Na Amon, Simone, on Chachi. Nimet, Nofa, Iri, on Pah Amon. Ni Iri, no Tai, no Tu. Irai, on Pah Amon. Nai, O Babu, Irai. Nechlayur, ni ei rish iti anose. Ni 
יספור את הבות עמון. נאי נוטאי. נאי תיארו נא תנמית. ותאומין תצ'אס. Petty S.A. is trapped. He can't be seen to undermine the alliance he brokered between his cousin the Pharaoh and the priesthood of Amun. Amun. <laughs> Chai, bai dimi. protect his family and he can't avenge his grandson's murder. Etiese's reign is over. Before he leaves Tujoy, Etiese commissions a second inscription on his statue in the Temple of Amun. This time, it carries a warning. Eden Zetziai ben On Ebef. On Edet, Naten Hermuaf, Semen Ahab ben Entaf, Nept Esrafen Hanasachuf. I had chichifi, sino nev sawif, half a machranev esitin ernihai. There was a time when Petty Essay's words carried real power. In the new political era, the inscription is no more than a futile gesture. <laughs> أن تكون رجلا وتتبع الخطوات التي وسمتها لك وما يكون إلا خير. اطمئن. اطمئن. سير. قف. أجدت وين وين معي. Once one of the most powerful figures in Egypt, Pesiese, 
is now a broken man. <laughs> he can't even offer his own daughter the protection she desperately needs. He leaves Nitemhe and her husband grieving for their murdered sons. Etiese never returned to Tujoy. And we know from his great-great-grandson's account that the priests of Tujoy did their best to destroy his legacy. Over the next century and a half, his family fought a losing battle to keep control of the temple. His eldest son followed him as prophet of Amun, but within a generation, the priests had evicted him and taken back all the family's wealth. By the time his great-great-grandson told this story, the royal dynasty of Petiese's cousin, the pharaoh Samtek, had been overthrown. But the priesthood of Amun kept its power. And defying the curse that Petiese had put on it, the priests in Tujoy destroyed his statue and wiped out all traces of his family. <laughs>